race fans, welcome to my little show about motorsports I like to call In the Pits with me, Stock Car Scott, here each Wednesday on the YouTube during racing season when I feel like it. Well, not much uh, local racing to talk about this week because of rain here on the west side. Evergreen did have uh, their figure eight racing and stuff like that, but South Sound Speedway got too wet to race. But I do get ahead of myself like I do every week. Friday, FS1, Fox Sports 1, had some uh, practice for NASCAR Xfinity and Monster Energy Cup with qualifying later for a cup at Richmond. It was nice that Dale Jr. made it to the final round in qualifying, but that was about the high point of his weekend uh, at Richmond. Matt Kenseth earned the pole, but uh, was only competitive the first half of the race on Sunday. Young gun Ryan Bellaney also showed a lot of promise by qualifying second. On Saturday morning, I watched the Xfinity Series race and hoped the weather would allow me to attend uh, racing later that evening. The Xfinity Richmond event was a pretty good show. Uh, veteran Brendan Gone uh, said he was channeling his inner Tim Richmond there at Richmond, but it didn't really help him a whole lot. He finished 35th after a crash. Dale Jr.'s driver, Justin Allgaier, won the second stage and battled hard for, the event, for an eventual second place finish. But because of the stage win, Allgaier was eligible for a $100,000 Xfinity Dash for Cash bonus and won that bonus because the race winner Kyle Larson being a cup regular could not win the big bucks. He was not eligible. Uh, funny thing about Larson though, uh, he won on a track that he says that he doesn't think that he's that it's really a good track for him. Well, I, I can only say he must have got better. And though his uh, streak of six place finishes ended at Bristol last week in a crash, Bubba Wallace posted another six place finish at Richmond in his number six Roush Mustang, newly sponsored by Mellow Yellow. Hopefully he'll do better in the next Xfinity race uh, this Saturday at his home state track and my most favorite track in the whole wide world, Talladega Super Speedway in little old East Boga, Alabama. Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s three Xfinity drivers, Elliot Sadler, Justin Allgaier, and new phenom William Byron sit 1-2-3 in the point standings with the next race in Earnhardt Country. After the Xfinity race at Richmond, I turned uh, to the weather because uh, the projections turned out to be basically right on the money. I never bothered packing the Monte Carlo for going to a race. I guess I could have joined the fun at Wenatchee if I had left earlier in the day, but I was set on South Sound Speedway. Once racing down south got canceled, I watched uh, open wheel racing on NBCSN and searched for other racing to watch online. First up was a replay of the Russian Grand Prix qualifying there at Sochi that I had missed earlier because it came on so early and it had a surprise outcome. Not only uh, a Ferrari lockout of the front row but Valtteri Botas uh, out-qualified teammate Lewis Hamilton to put the Mercedes champion in fourth place for the first time in recent memory that I can remember anyway. Oh yeah, and uh, Sebastian Vettel scored a pole there uh, with more surprises yet in store for the Russian Grand Prix that ran on Sunday. After the F1 replay, NBCSN showed uh, qualifying that they had taped on Friday night at Phoenix International Raceway for the IndyCar guys. Helio Dancing with the Stars Castro Neves was uh, once again fastest at 
Phoenix uh, with a lap at the one mile track in a little under 19 seconds. It was actually like 18.80 blah 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 or something like that. Oh, that race fans is just crazy fast. After qualifying, NBC uh, went to uh, NBCSN, that is, went directly uh, to the IndyCar race there at Phoenix. At uh, 19 seconds or so a lap, the race didn't take very long after the first lap wreck took out five of the 21 starters. Kind of like a local late model race you might see around here. Uh, defending champion Simon Pagino ended up winning over his Penske Chevy teammate, uh, Will Power, for his first ever victory on an oval. Pagino leads the driver point standings with the next race um, on May the 13th on the road course that's inside of the 2.5 mile track at the Brickyard. And that's part of a build-up uh, to the 101st running of the Indianapolis 500 on the 28th of this month. While watching the IndyCar race, I also uh, was surfing the net for other racing. I actually found a live stream from a packed Bowman Gray Stadium and saw Burt Myers win in the Modifieds over Tim Brown at the Madhouse. For real race fans, no explanation is needed about the Madhouse. But a few years ago, it was the site of the very best reality show on History Channel or any, any other channel, for matter of fact. Oh, of course, it was one of those shows that was just too good for television and only ran one season. But I captured every episode on DVD. But I drift. Oh. Time for a Mountain Dew break with Sterling Marlin there. Oh, I also tried to get interested in racing from uh, Tucson and uh, Magic Valley there on Fans Choice TV. Uh, but once uh, streams of video started from uh, Wenatchee Valley Super Oval, once they became available, the other races just became unimportant. Yep, Saturday night was the running of the third annual Leonard Evans 150 at the Wenatchee Valley Super Oval. And I can only suppose that now video recording is allowed there. Where in the past, it had been prohibited. That's why you don't see any uh, uh, Wenatchee Valley Super Oval video on the Stock Car Scott channel there on YouTube. And I hope it's the case that uh, the prohibition has been lifted. I was able to follow the race uh, to its finish uh, thanks to several folks. Uh, it started with a uh, group sponsored by Leonard Evans that was videoing over in the first turn. Unfortunately, their video signal, their signal did not stay strong enough to cover the entire night of racing. Um, a few other folks uh, had camera phones up in the grandstands, but the best coverage for the night of the third annual Leonard Evans Memorial 150 was again by my longtime Seattle friend from back in the old Waterboy sports days, Kenny Burns. He was uh, there uh, with another Waterboys alumnus, Big Low, Lawrence Andreski, Seattle's biggest sports fan. And it was nice seeing him there supporting the sport that I love. The Super Oval had four classes of racing uh, that night with Bandoleros, Street Stocks, Legends, along with the third annual Leonard Evans Memorial 150. First, Scott Singletary won the Bandolero Main, then the 50-lap Mountain View Polaris Street Stock Sizzler was won by Josh Ingram over Bart Hector Jr. and Bill Rutherford. And I think uh, Josh pocketed a cool grand for his trouble. 
Then it seems uh, Randy Schaff uh, won over Dwayne Swanson in the Legends. I'm not really sure because the race was shortened uh, just a few laps because of a nasty wreck starring Kyle uh, Kinzebeck. Oh, and after the uh, uh, track workers got that mess cleaned up, he ended up on turn one on his on his lid there. But uh, after they got turn one cleaned up, the uh, 23 cars of the Northwest Super Late Model Series lined up for the third annual Leonard Evans Memorial 150. Shane Mitchell qualified third fast, and I was told he seemed to have the car to beat that, that, that evening. The invert did not bury him in the field, and he was able to work his way uh, up to the lead by a quarter way into the race, and then led the rest of the race for a win at a track that sort of owed him one from a couple of years ago when the wall at Wenatchee destroyed his car and knocked him right out. Joey Bird ran strong all night to finish second. Brandon Havens uh, was able to fight off charging, hard charging uh, Brittany Zamora to take third place and the uh, top five was rounded out by the track owner who rallied with a repaired car and started on uh, shotgun on the field. Of course, my disappointment of the day was that Buck Knoll Jr. didn't get to make his uh, debut in the Northwest Super Late Model Series with either his new ride, whose engine was uh, still not ready, or faithful old Margaret, who unfortunately broke there at the track, leaving the Knoll team watching the Leonard Evans 150 from the grandstands. Hopefully Team Knoll will have Margaret repaired for her next date with the Better All Auto Sales Twisted T West Coast Late Model Series this coming Saturday at Yakima Speedway for another fun 100 lap event. And before I forget, uh, next up at Wenatchee Valley Super Oval are the West Coast uh, Wing Sprint Cars, Vintage Modifies, my favorites, the Northwest uh, Pro 4 Trucks, Thunder Cars, and Road Runners there on May the 20th. Sunday, I had the alarm uh, set and had good intentions of waking up early for the Grand Prix of Russia there at Sochi, but just couldn't hang. I wanted to enjoy the NASCAR uh, racing later, so uh, after setting the video recorder, I returned to bed, uh, planning to watch the Grand Prix of Russia at, later after the Monster Energy Cup race there at Richmond. Uh, it was a Grand Prix that was full of surprises, but uh, the one surprise that Valtteri Bottas won his first ever Grand Prix was not one of the surprises because I happened to catch a report on uh, Fox Sports 1 uh, there that run at the bottom of the screen uh, during the Cup pre-race, so that spoiled that. Well, they didn't know that I you know, had yet to watch the Grand Prix, but you know, one thing I was wondering is why they did the same thing on their own channel there, there uh, with the Xfinity race results that they played during the replay of the Richmond uh, 250 the night before. I mean, wouldn't it be nice uh, if they wouldn't give away uh, the name of the winner during the race for those who might not have seen it yet? And we're watching it for the first time, and and you know, like it was live or something. You know, just have a little common sense courtesy there, Fox Sports One. Quit driving away your viewers, anyway. <sighs> Rants make me thirsty. Well, Terry Botas got uh, got a heck of a jump there, though, at the uh, Grand Prix of Russia from the second row on the start to pass both of the Ferraris to lead the first part of the race. 
Uh, when Botas pitted for tires, Sebastian Vettel uh, led the middle part of the Grand Prix, but uh, pit strategies put Botas back in the lead the last part of the race, though Vettel was able to pull within less than a second behind Botas for second place on the podium. Third place went to Vettel's teammate, Kimi Raikkonen, and surprise, surprise, my favorite Lewis Hamilton did not make the podium in fourth there, even though he finished the race, which is an unusual occurrence. Usually he's on the podium or he doesn't finish. Mercedes now leads the manufacturer's points by one, and Ferrari's Vettel leads the driver's points by a dozen or so with the next uh, Grand Prix May the 14th in España, in Spain, folks. After the Russian Grand Prix, I was uh, up for uh, most of the race day, pre-race show, like I say, where they spoiled, gave me the spoiler there for the F1 race. Um, of course, I saw a little more about Dale Earnhardt Jr. retiring. So now, my wife and I are talking about which race we are uh, going to go to this season to see Junior race one last time. You can guess which track gets my vote. But back to Richmond. Junior had a horrible day. He started 12th and backed up from there. Uh, he rallied on pit strategy and ran second for a few laps, but then got run into the wall by his teammate. Oh, seven times and wound up with a 30th place finish. My oldest brother's favorite, Chase Elliott, did a little bit better, finishing 24th, uh, but he was on the lead lap along with local favorite, Casey Kane, who finished uh, two places better. Martin Truex Jr., who uh, my wife and my friend JJ like, finished 10th, but relatively speaking, my younger brother's favorite driver, uh, Kevin Harvick, Again, finished the best in fifth in that Stuart Haas Ford. The winner was also driving a Ford. The Joker had to start back in the back after a transmission change, but was able to work his way up to the front to give Penske a third win this year. His teammate, Bad Brad Kaslowski, who has the other two Penske wins, won stage two, and finished second to the Joker, Joey Logano. Kyle Larson still leads in the driver's standings, with Martin Truex Jr. moving up to second, and Chase Elliott dropping to third, going into the next race at my favorite track in the whole wide world, Talladega Super Speedway in my home state of Alabama. This Sunday, I will be watching not only to see Dale Earnhardt Jr. win, but to scout prospects for my next driver because my new driver has to be able to drive well at my favorite track. Oh, and let's see, the uh, ARCA Series, they also had a stock car race uh, this past week that I couldn't see on MAV-TV. Dalton Sargent. Uh, won the 200 lapper on the high banks of Salem, Indiana by putting a lap on the whole field in his Ford, or so I read. Dalton is tied for second in the standings with Kyle Weatherman, who finished third at Salem. Uh, leading the points going into the next race is Austin Terrio, who finished fifth at Salem, in a Ken Schrader Ford. I hope Sean went to that race. And what's the next race for uh, the ARC Series? The General Tire 200 at my favorite racetrack in the whole wide world in my home state of Alabama. Yep, Talladega Super Speedway. And it will be shown on Fox Sports 1 this coming Friday afternoon here so I can see it. The ARCA uh, 200 is only 76 laps long, but that's uh, a great way to start 
one of my favorite weekends of the year. Then Saturday is the Xfinity race uh, there at Talladega, early enough that I can see all of it before we head east to the next 100 lap event for the Better All Auto Sales Twisted T West Coast Late Model Series at Yakima Speedway there beside Interstate 82 with Super Stocks, Hornets, and the dreaded Bump to Pass cars. And, best of all, the weather looks great for both Talladega and Yakima. Hopefully the weather will allow for racing on uh, the west side here on Saturday after some showers pass through in the morning. If so, South Sound Speedway will uh, be having late models, mini stocks, baby grands, and legends, while Evergreen Speedway has super late models, uh, mini stocks, Northwest Pro 4 trucks, Hornets, Youth Hornets, and Vintage Modifieds. And also, it is uh, Military Appreciation Night there at the fairgrounds, so uh, families with service IDs can get in for free. Please check the Evergreen uh, website for all the details. No results this week from uh, Western Speedway up in Victoria, B.C., but uh, coming up this weekend are Super Sprints, uh, late model twin 50s, my favorite uh, division, stock cars, and dwarf cars. Hopefully I will get a report from Cole. So, you have plenty of racing to choose from locally this weekend because more tracks are having season openers this weekend. Uh, like Hermiston Raceway with the Tri-State uh, Street Stocks, uh, Super Mini Stocks, Mini Stocks, and Hornets. That's what they're having for their opening night. Uh, Spokane County uh, Raceway is also uh, having their uh, season opener this weekend with the Northwest Pro 4 Alliance Challenge Series and the Demolition Derby. You also have some of the best racing of the season right on TV that you can watch Saturday morning before heading out to the track. So you know what my plans are going to be for this weekend, all weekend, racing. And I hope you too are making plans to watch some racing this weekend. Then you can go post the results of what you see on my Facebook page, Therefore In The Pits with me, Stock Car Scott, and get a reporter shout out on the next show and then uh, when and when and when you might ask is that next episode of my little show about motorsports that I like to refer to as in the pits with me stock car Scott well repeat after me here on the YouTube next Wednesday same stock car time, same stock car channel. You know, if I feel like it. So, please make me happy. Go out and see some racing this weekend because all races matter, even demos and bump to pass. So go. Before I knock over my drink again, go, go see a race and watch Talladega on TV. Go!